Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphen here. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to have a fully functioning Super Nintendo game console on your Android device. Whether it be a cell phone or a tablet, you'll be able to play your Super Nintendo games as if you had the actual original console. I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how to get this all set up. I'm gonna show you guys how to download and install the emulator, an app that emulates the gaming console. I'm gonna show you how to connect a remote controller to your device so that you can actually play the games easier with the controller. And then I'm gonna also show you how to actually connect the entire setup from your phone or your tablet to a TV so you can actually play and view on a bigger screen. Now there are various Super Nintendo emulators, but my personal recommendation is Super Retro 16. So on your Android device, go to the Google Play Store and search Super Retro 16. Now this app does cost about three or four dollars. It's a one-time purchase, but honestly, it's so worth it and it works amazingly well. I've been using this app for, I think like five years now and I play all my Super Nintendo games. It works amazingly well on a variety of phones and it doesn't take a lot of power or a lot of storage space. So once you open Super Retro 16, here you'll see that I have no games installed. There is a button for search internet for games. Now, legally, I can't tell you how to get ROMs. And I do have to tell you that you shouldn't have any ROMs unless you've paid for and own the original cartridge games. And the ROMs that you play on this emulator should be essentially a secondary source of the game. Again, I'm not telling you what you can and can't do. I'm just telling you what I have to tell you. So now let's say you have the downloaded zip folder ROM that you wanna play. Click on the top right options button, the three dots, and then click on scan for games. And then click OK. That's gonna scan your device for any zip folder ROMs. And you'll see here it says finding. So here you see Super Mario World. Now if I click on that, that'll actually launch the game. But I actually want to connect this to a controller and again to a TV before I actually play. So before we launch the game, we're gonna get a couple things together. One of which is this CLDAY USB type C adapter. Now this is gonna go on your Android device. I've used this since the Galaxy S8 and on. Currently, I'm gonna show you guys on the Galaxy S20 Plus, but pretty much any Android device that uses a USB type C, this will work on. So you connect this to the actual USB type C port on your device. And then on the bottom of this adapter, you have another USB type C port, a full size HDMI port, and a USB type A port. Then you're also gonna need a remote controller. You can use a variety of controllers, PS4, Xbox. You can even buy a USB Super Nintendo controller and use that. But today I'm actually gonna show you guys with the Power A wired controller. This controller I use on a variety of my emulators. It works really well and it has a 12 foot cable that it comes with. So I can actually connect the actual setup the phone with the adapter, the HDMI out to the TV, which will display it on the big screen. And I can have it further away from me with the USB cable being 12 feet long. I can be a lot more comfortable and not be so close to the TV. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and connect this CLDAY adapter to my phone. Then we'll grab the cable and the micro USB side will connect to the controller. Then we'll grab the USB type A side and connect that to the adapter. Now off the bat, just having it connected, this controller can actually operate my phone and control a lot of the settings, but it actually doesn't work perfectly well with the emulator because the buttons are kind of all over the place. So what we have to do is now custom map the buttons to work with the emulator the way we want it. Now you can actually launch the game and pause the game and actually go into the settings at any point, but I'm gonna do it before the game is launched. So click on the top right corner, the little options, and now go to settings. Then we're gonna to go to controller one, and then we're gonna to go to button mappings. Click on that, and then click on the default. Now here, you're gonna see a list of buttons. Now these are the buttons that are actually a part of the original Super Nintendo controller. Now with this Power A controller, because it is a Nintendo Switch controller, the letters are still the same as the Super Nintendo, the Y, X, A, B. So that makes it a little easier to know which button you want to program. So now back on the app, click A, then click once again on A, and then it says key map. Now on your controller, press A. Now select B on the app, 
and then it says key map. Now select B on the controller. Then click on X on the app, key map to X on the controller. Then click Y on the app, and then key map, press Y on the controller. L, go to L. R, go to R. Start, go to start. Select, go to select. Now up, down, left, right, you can decide if you wanna use the joystick or the directional pad. Personally, I prefer to use the directional pad because the Super Nintendo controller actually had a directional pad and no joystick. So I'm gonna select up, click up on the D-pad, down, down, left, left, right, right. Now, there are a list of other buttons such as turbo, turbo toggle, menu cheats, etc. I don't mess with any of that because the buttons that we already programmed are the only buttons on the Super Nintendo controller. Once that's set up, click back, click back again. Now go ahead and launch your game. And now you're gonna see it's gonna start off exactly like the original Super Mario World, which is to this day, one of my favorite games of all time. So now we can play on the controller, click on start, and then now you can use this controller just as if you did whenever you had an actual console. I'm gonna choose Mario A as my save slot. One player. Now it's gonna load up. I'm gonna go ahead and skip all this. And then here we go, we're about to start. Again, everything works on the controller. The app works so good. No lag, it looks amazing. Let's go ahead and start on the first level. So now that we're in the first level, I'm gonna show you a little bit on how it works. I'm not gonna play the full game, but just so you can see everything works fine and the controllers work just as the Super Nintendo did. So the run, I can hold Y to pick this up. I can throw this, jump, do my little spin move. This thing is flawless. I love this. I love this app. I love the Super Nintendo, so being able to play all these games is really, really fun. Really quick, let me show you guys a few things that you can actually do within this app with the emulator. So if you go ahead and click back, here you have a few options. You have save state, which you click on that, and that'll save any time, any moment. Let's say I move a little forward. Let's just say I've already completed either, even just right there. Let's say I didn't even finish an entire level and I wanna save it. Go ahead and click back, save state, and then now I can choose that save slot one that was already created earlier as my first original one, or I can even create another slot. So you can have many different save slots of the same game. I'm just gonna choose to overwrite save slot one, and then let's go back and let me show you some other options. Now, if you have multiple save slots, you can actually click load state to choose the one that you wanna load. Now you can close the app, you can go turbo, which makes the app run faster. You can do multiplayer, cheats, et cetera. I personally never really mess with any of these other things except for the multiplayer. Uh, but settings here is where you can go and remap controllers, et cetera. So you have a variety of options also where you see here, there's one that says touch, it has a little cross on it, but if you click on it, and when I go back, I actually have the buttons digitally that I can use touch screen while I play. But honestly, it can be done, but it's uncomfortable. I'd rather much have a controller, a physical controller. So for me in the settings, I actually have the touch controls off. Now there are other features here. I'm not gonna show you how to work all of them. The main thing is the controller and the save slots. And again, you can connect this setup to a TV using the adapter by connecting an HDMI cable to your TV. And because you get a full size HDMI out of here, I've actually connected this to my Elgato capture card and actually done gaming videos and that's been really fun because I've been able to do live streams with retro gaming and not a lot of people do that. So it's been a lot of fun. If you guys are interested in getting this CLDAY adapter or this Power A controller or the USB Super Nintendo controller, I do have links in the description where you can purchase them from either B&H Photo or Amazon. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.